Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, we're delighted to be joined in the studio by our guests for this evening's edition of the Daily Debate. His Excellency Ambassador Mithat in the former Assistant Foreign Minister. Once again, thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador, for joining us. Let me start uh, by a bit of an open-ended question and ask you, of course, Egypt is a key member of many regional alliances and plays uh, a pivotal role in the Middle East, North African region and asserts itself in various political, uh, economic, as well as even religious and cultural spheres uh, in the region. In the very beginning, tell me about your excellency, why do you see Egypt as having such a pivotal role in the MENA region? Well, first of all, the geography. Mm. I mean, Egypt is centered to play this role. Its uh, geopolitical importance in the region, uh, by default, uh, gives us to play this role. Yes. Not to mention that the most important and the, 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 the most crucial problem that we have right now is the Palestinian cause, and we are center right next to it. Mm -hmm. um, this, of course, forces us to a certain situation where we play roles that, by the nature of Egypt, historically, mm -hmm. or by the importance of these countries around us mm -hmm. geographically, we need to play this role in order to also protect ourselves strategically. Yes. I mean, it's not a secret that we need to have uh, this area um, as the Palestinian area, mm -hmm. right to uh, next to our border as a buffer between us or any possible invasion from the east mm -hmm. and as you know traditionally and historically mm. most of the invasions that came to Egypt came from the east mm -hmm. so this is strategically one of the most important areas for us mm -hmm. and of course with the presence of the Palestinian and the Israelis on this side gives it even more importance than usual mm -hmm. so I think Egypt is, is forced by as I said its geopolitical mm. existence to play this role mm -hmm. So it's area and geography, as you said. As and a main, history. And history, absolutely. Throughout uh, you know, the last 10 years or so, we've seen um, Cairo's diversification when it comes to dealing with foreign policy, uh, diplomatic ties in the area. And Egypt has really played a critical role in many different countries uh, in the MENA region, aside, of course, from the Palestinian cause, which we will focus on later. Uh, but we've also e seen Egypt uh, playing a deep deeply uh, into diplomatic ties when it comes to Sudan, South Sudan, uh, Libya, uh, Syria, Lebanon, all the surrounding uh, countries. How do you see Egypt's foreign policy towards these countries and the role that it plays with regards to its ties with these countries? Well, I mean, if you remember uh, when the Libyan question mm. erupted, we had our position vis-a-vis -vis mm. the foreign presence, of, uh, I mean the, the, the foreign troops mm. presence Most in serious. Libya mm. and uh, President Sisi had even to draw a red line not mm. to be crossed in certain area mm. and uh, this is uh, due to the importance of our western uh, borders. Mm. Having said that, I mean it's, it's, it's ironic that at this stage of our history and the delicacy of the moment that mm. we are having on all our front uh, or our, our borders, we are having a certain kind of crisis. I mean, on the west we have Libya, mm. on the Sudan we have it on the south, mm, south, and at the east, as you know, we have the Palestinian and the Israeli mm. issue. Mm. Only the only thing left is the Mediterranean Sea, which luckily so far is Keep our safe. Fingers crossed. <laughs> yes. So Keep our the fingers idea crossed. is that from the three sides we are the only safe haven in mm. the area, mm. and this actually put even extra. Strain. Uh, strain on Egypt mm. simply for the number of refugees that are coming. I mean, we've mm. all noticed here in Egypt the number of Sudanese refugees mm. that are seeking refuge in Egypt because of the internal status. I served personally in, in Sudan as mm. a consul there, mm. and uh, actually they, they really respect the presence of Egypt and they respect and love the Egyptians. I mean, there is an eternal relationship between Egypt and Sudan. Mm -hmm. We don't even need to focus on this point. Mm -hmm. From the Libyan side, it's always been very good and strong ties, and some even of the tribes that are living in the west of, of Egypt mm -hmm. have also ramifications in Libya as well. Mm -hmm. When it comes to uh, the east, the eternal Israeli-Palestinian conflict and mm -hmm. the Israeli-Arab conflict, mm -hmm. actually, Egypt was always involved in this by war or by peace. Mm -hmm. Now it's the time to Egypt to, to mediate and play its peaceful role between uh, Israel and Palestinian 
of course, so far we, although the many uh, initiatives that we presented, including the last one, that is only a few days old, uh, we didn't hear uh, enough or a very positive response from the mm -hmm. concerned party, especially the Israeli one. Mm -hmm. Your Excellency, this leads me to uh, my next question, the Israelis' response, as you said. I mean, aside from the fact that the whole world has its eyes on the region, is watching what's going on, uh, lots of, uh, you know, debate regarding why is Israel still persistent with its attacks on civilians, on women, on children, uh, as regardless of the warnings, regardless of the pleas, regardless of the UN resolutions, regardless of the meetings, yet they seem to continue uh, their aggression. How do you see their response? Well, the whole, the whole Israeli position rely on one thing, mm -hmm. which is impunity. Mm -hmm. And as long as you don't receive any warnings Punish. about breaking the international law and the international humanitarian law, you will continue doing what pleases you, mm -hmm. regardless of any laws. Mm -hmm. uh, we've heard so far that there is divergence that is growing between the United States, which is the typical, main. traditional mm -hmm. main ally of Israel, and Israel on the other side, especially between President Biden and Netanyahu, mm -hmm. the Prime Minister of Israel. Mm -hmm. But having said that, honestly, in my personal point of view, I only trust what the United States does more than what it says. Mm -hmm. Because we've heard saying so many times, I mean, the United States have always been an advocate for the two-state solution. Mm -hmm. But what did it do in order to um, implement this two-state solution? Actually, not much. Mm -hmm. Because the idea of actually even uh, forcing Israel or putting pressure on Israel to uh, to, to sit and negotiate mm. a peaceful, long-lasting solution mm. to the uh, situation was never uh, was was never a success. Mm. The idea is that I think that the United States need now more than ever to exert some, if we may call it, tough love mm. on Israel because actually what Israel is doing it's it's affecting the position of the United States in the world, because the whole world sees the United States, and actually it doesn't actually uh, hide it. Mm. I mean, when you have 14 countries in favor of a certain UN resolution mm. in and one the Security abstention Council, or one veto, it's ridiculous. Well, regardless mm. of the abstention, but mm. only one veto that mm. actually take this uh, resolution and just throw it away mm. in, in the face of the whole international community and the world community. Mm. What, what we can deviate from us? The only conclusion that we have is that Israel is extremely powerful to the point that even the United States cannot stop it. Mm. And this is what I meant but by a little bit tough love because the United States by this position is isolating itself more and more from the arena and it, lose, it is losing its capacity as a fair mm. negotiator between the two parties. And its credibility as well. Of course. Mm -hmm. Right. Your Excellency, uh, speaking about the Egyptian role in the region with regards to the Palestinian uh, cause, Egypt has always been behind the Palestinian cause. Even with the latest attacks from the 7th of October till today, Egypt has had a pivotal role to play, uh, has refused to allow Palestinians in to, to, to refusing to dissolve the Palestinian cause, has provided humanitarian aid on a daily basis as much as possible, uh, getting aid trucks full of uh, medicine, food, etc., across to the Gaza Strip, and has also played a diplomatic role with regards to negotiations, with regards to prisoner exchanges, swaps, etc. How do you see the role that Egypt is playing now on the ground? Well, Egypt, since the beginning, have played a very important role towards yes. this, from day one, mm -hmm. from the 7th of October, mm -hmm. from uh, the, the, the beginning of the atrocities. At every moment, Egypt had a role that, or a, even a word to say. Mm. But having said that, since you don't have someone who is replying to your initiatives, mm. then actually they stop where they started. Because the only solution is for someone to listen to you, to negotiate, maybe put some points that are missing according to his point of view, and then we can implement something. But when, like the last, uh, the last initiative, for instance, mm -hmm. that has three phases that we all heard about. Yes. The first one is consisting on uh, exchanging Exchange. hostages mm -hmm. from both uh, parties. Mm -hmm. uh, and the second one is to, for, to formate a coalition government, which is something very important. Mm -hmm. Because ever since the beginning and after the Oslo Accord and Israel 
well, after actually the election of uh, Hamas mm -hmm. in Gaza, uh, although Egypt at the time warned from the result of uh, those elections, mm -hmm. but the Americans and the Israelis insisting on having those elections, which after actually weakening so much the Palestinian Authority, mm -hmm. the people actually at the moment, they had to elect Hamas as a hardliner. Mm -hmm. As we see in Israel in times of uh, terror or fear, they always turn to elect the extreme wing, the yes. extreme right wing, mm -hmm. for the simple reason that people are scared. Mm -hmm. So the Palestinians were no different. They mm -hmm. found that the Palestinian Authority is becoming more and more weak mm -hmm. because the Israelis were, were extremely uh, strict on, on, on any kind of compromise mm -hmm. towards them. Yes. So the Palestinian chose Hamas. And mm -hmm. now, of course, everybody is blaming Hamas for the escalation and everything. Mm -hmm. However, I don't see it this way. Mm -hmm. I see that the escalation started since uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu took to the United Nations a map of the Middle East where he totally erased the Palestinians. So when you totally remove the political horizon mm -hmm. from people, and from people who believe, and, and the whole world actually believes that they have a right mm. to a self-determination. What do you think they will do? Mm. They have to fight back. Absolutely. And this is what happened the 7th of October. So actually, what happened the 7th of October was not the beginning. The beginning was the pre Prime Minister Netanyahu mm. standing before the whole world with a map where he totally erased Palestine from, from it. So this is one thing. Mm. Once again, we go back to the Egyptian initiatives, mm. and this was the second phase, the coalition government. Mm. So now we can have a unified voice in front of the Israelis, mm -hmm. which is something they always claim that they cannot find. So we can have a coalition government now, especially that the Palestinian Authority showed some sympathy towards Hamas after the 7th of I October, so. and after, of course, the atrocities and the war crimes that is happening in Gaza. So there is a kind of sympathy and support mm. to uh, the Palestinian people of Gaza. And then comes the th third and final step, which is su supposed to be negotiating a long-lasting peace between the two, uh, uh, the two entities. Mm. Um, I hope that we will hear soon from any party who really wishes to have peace, especially the, the Israelis now are, to a very large extent, fed up from their own government. There is an internal rift happening of course, inside of course. Israel. Actually, a lot of, of observers have seen this government as a failed government mm. since the 7th of October because it failed to protect its own citizen against those attacks. Mm. Let's not forget that Hamas and its militants and other groups of uh, the Palestinian resistance managed to enter to uh, the, the, the Israeli territories and kidnap uh, militaries and uh, civilians and uh, managed to walk around and to do a lot of things in the absence, total absence of the Israeli army, mm -hmm. one that was once thought as the invincible. Strong, yes. So the idea here is that the strike and the blow of 7th of October represent uh, a, a very strong humiliation to uh, Israeli security policies and Israeli IDF. Mm -hmm. So they, they, and this is one of the reasons why they are so being so uh, extreme vendetta mm -hmm. about uh, the, the, the the attacks mm -hmm. on Gaza mm -hmm. because it's a kind of vengeance mm -hmm. and they want to mark a victory because they want to say that at the end the we won. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I don't think again many other observers think that the idea of totally erasing Hamas is totally out of the question. It's an illusion mm -hmm. that the Israelis think that they can do it. What they are doing is carpet bombing Gaza, and um, at the end, uh, they, are going, they are trying to turn this land into an inhabitable, inhabitable mm -hmm. place so that the Palestinians would not find a place to live, and this will open for other scenarios that nobody wants to see in the region, including the Americans. Mm -hmm. So let's wait and see, because the situation now seems to be very dangerous, especially uh, after the... the, the, the the, the, the coup that, ha that mm. happened yesterday, yesterday yes. the we strike of yesterday. Yes, actually, uh, I do want to get into that, uh, but uh, we have to take a short break, Your Excellency. Let's take a short break, and we'll be back to get into more details about the latest developments yesterday. Stay tuned. We'll be back.